Hey, yo, GOAT format players, it's Skill Brown Magician here, and it's been quite a while. So to make up for the lost time between you and me, I present to you the first part in 12 GOAT format deck profiles. Originally, I was just going to do 10 profiles, but I was like, nah, we got to go even harder for you guys. You've been waiting for a while. So I just want to present you with just all of these profiles that I've been working on for some time. And, you know, I really am excited to offer these. We have Chaos Base, Super Horus, Machine Gate, Pitch Zombies, Hat Control, Dino Gate 2.0. These are some of like the decks that I've been working on for a while that I've had in the works and I just never had the time to put them all together. So I'm just going to unleash all this content to you. And this is the first set of six. So let's go right into Chaos Base. It's using Frontline Base as one of the key cards. And it's just like a playful take with machines. I'm not going to go over every single card and every single deck profile, but I'm just going to go over some of the core interactions. So this is Chaos Base, and it's essentially just abusing Frontline Base because it says you can once per turn special summon a level 4 Aloric Union Monster from your hand. And it just so happens you have these two Light Machine Monsters that are also Unions. They have 1500 attack and 1300 defense. That's Z Metal Tank. And then Y Dragon Head, it's 1500 attack and 1600 defense, which is very respectable. You can block a tribe. You can block a, block a breaker after it's used its token. Block any recruiter. So that one's pretty solid. And you special summon one of these guys out, and then you can normal summon something else. Ideally, you can special summon one of these guys out and then tribute it off for blowback. And then maybe you'll have the requirements for Chaos Sorcerer or BLS in Graveyard now. Or you can special summon one of these out, normal summon another one, flip a Dekoichi that you had left over from last turn, and you know just really go in on your opponent. And obviously these decks are more casual, but I just wanted to play with some cards that never get to see the light of day. So this is my take on how I would use Frontline Base. I have Double Royal Decree because we're playing the one Jinzo. We also have, you know, double limiter removal with mind control. The reason I go with mind control is because you just want to clear their field of monsters. And if you get a flip effect, great. If you get to ri get rid of one of their chaos monsters, that's awesome. Um, but the main goal is you just want to get rid of any monsters on their field and then swing in with all of your machines and use your limiter removal for game. Because with frontline base, it just really allows you to swarm. And, you know, we're playing a lot of. Uh, different cards that we can set, like three triple Dekoichi. Obviously, we could set any of our Union monsters. Then that's just to mask the Morphing Jar and the Cyber Jar, which just are ridiculous if you get them off in this deck. And then obviously, you know, you have your Royal Decree to turn off their back row. And you have your Jinzo. You have Blowback Dragon to destroy their back row. We have Breaker. Just this is a really fun version of machines and playing frontline base. So there's the first deck. Let's get into the second profile. You guys know that I love the Horus deck, and I wanted to play a card that's super crazy and specific to dragons, super rejuvenation. If you don't know what this card is, I don't blame you. It's so random, and it's not the best, but let's look at it. Super rejuvi. During the end phase of the turn, this card was activated. Draw a number of cards equal to the combined number of dragon monsters you discarded or tributed from your hand or field this turn. You can use this in the end phase. If you use it in the end phase and you, let's say, discarded two dragon monsters, you get to draw two cards. If you draw another super rejuvi in those two cards, you can activate that one and draw another two cards, which is insane. So it's just kind of like, it it's kind of reminds me of um, that one card where uh, Heart of the Underdog, where if you draw like a normal monster, you can keep drawing. This one, if you draw another Super Rejuvi, you can keep drawing again. <clears throat> so with Super Rejuvi, we're basing the whole deck around this. We either want to tribute off dragons or we want to discard dragons. And I'm using all these different cards to do that. I have Morphing Jar, which discards from the hand. I'm also using Tribe Infecting, uh, Virus, Rehab, Card Destruction, Graceful Charity, Double 
Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. And then we're also playing Triple Metamorphosis, which you contribute um, one of your dragons on the field. And what's interesting is you can actually tribute uh, one of your four stars and you can bring out Dark Fire Dragon, which is still a dragon and would be protected under King Dragoon, which is just kind of funny. And it allows you to tribute off one of your dragons to just have an additional target for a Super Rejuvi. Also, you have Triple Horus, the Black Flame Dragon. You contribute over your other dragon monsters and just bring him out. That's one way. Ideally, you're trying to bring him out with the Fusilier and Metamorphosis because with these, you can just set Fusilier, tribute it off for Metamorphosis, and guess what? You bring out King Dragoon, and he allows you to special summon any dragon monster from your hand. So you can bring out Mirage Dragon, Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 4, or Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 6. I threw in the spice with Mirage Dragon because I needed more dragon targets for Super Rejuvi just so the ratios would be okay. And I just wanted to throw in a spicy dragon and that also really helps out in the battle uh, in the battle phase because it just straight up, he's a Jinzo for specifically the battle phase. So if your opponent allows you to enter the battle phase when he's on the field, you can basically, you have all traps negated. Um, also, what's really nice is we're playing called the Haunted. So you can go into battle phase attack with your other monsters and if you have a mirage dragon in your graveyard if your opponent activates a trap guess what chain call the haunted special summon mirage dragon their traps are negated so it's kind of like a mini jinzo which is kind of dope and it's dragon so it works with king dragoon uh where this won't be able to be targeted and it just turns off traps period during the battle phase so really nice card and those are kind of the interactions we have Phoenix Wing Wind Blast is another discard outlet. This card's super ridiculous. Um, setting your opponent back a turn when you have like a King Dragoon on field with a Horus um, or just any dragon on field, that's you're already setting them back and you have a board that's pretty oppressive that they need to deal with. So that's Super Horus. Uh, definitely could be changed around. Um, like I said, these are casual. I don't think it's ideal to run triple Super Rejuvi. Um, let alone even just this dragon lineup. Um, definitely more competitive ways to build a deck, but I just like to play with those cards that we don't usually get to play with and try to make it as competitive as possible. So the next one, this is uh, definitely one of the more competitive decks in the bunch. Uh, Machine Gate. Man, this deck is so explosive, and I just love um, the draw power in this deck. Um, I'm not really trying to rely on just like so many scapegoats because this deck's so explosive, especially with triple Cyberstein, just being able to turbo into things like Gatling Dragon, which completes the machine archetype and you're just getting rid of monsters. You're giant trinating their back row away and you have things like Jinzo to just prevent their traps anyways. And then you have just ridiculous otk potential with triple limiter removal and then megamorph i will let you know this you have to use megamorph first because this says while your life points uh, are lower than your opponents the equipped monster's attack becomes double its original attack so you don't want to um, use limiter removal first because this will double the monster's attack and then if you use megamorph it just basically resets it and it just makes it double. So for example, if I had, um, let's just say I had Jinzo and I activated limiter removal, he would be at 48. If I equip Megamorph to him, it only doubles its original attack. So it'd basically just be 48. So you have to make sure you use Megamorph first, which will boost it up to 4,800. Then limiter just says double the attack, not the original attack, double the attack of all machine monsters you currently control until the end of this turn. So basically, Megamorph, your Jinzo first, 48, then with limiter it becomes 84. Crazy. So with this deck, I really like this ratio. You want to see Cyberstein in hand because Cyberstein with Monster Gate is just so ridiculously clean. And then if you hit one of your two sacred cranes you can just draw for more and then you have 
your machines, Blowback Dragon, Jinzo, a Fusilier, and then a Dark Magician of Chaos. Honestly, you could probably cut the Fusilier. He's not even super needed. Um, I mean, it is kind of nice that he's a normal summonable monster and he's a machine. And then you can limit or removal him up to 28, which is, you know, that's not the worst. Um, but I definitely think that he's not even necessary. I think if you cut one more monster from the lineup, you're just running a tinier monster lineup and your chances of hitting Demok are even greater. Um, what I really like in this deck is the double jar of greed, double upstart goblin. Honestly, they gain a thousand life points, even two thousand life points. It straight up doesn't even matter in this deck because you melt through their life points with limiter removal. It's like pretty obscene, like the life point um, counts that you can hit with this deck. And you're running double mind control because, like I said, in the chaos base deck, you're not trying to knock their monsters. That's like just one aspect. You're just trying to clear their field so your monsters can swing in for complete damage, right? You want to just clear their field so you can attack in with the Jinzo that you boosted up to 84 and just kill them, one-shot them, right? It's pretty ridiculous. Um, I really like this build. We have the Lightning Vortex. We have the card destruction to just get through our deck faster. We play, you know, triple Giant Trinade and Heavy Storm, so I didn't really feel like it needed Royal Decree. I just opted to speed through the deck as fast as possible. Mind control can net us things like Magician of Faith or Decoichis, which just allow us to mill through our deck even faster. I really love playing this deck. Totally would recommend playing Machine Gate if you like Reasoning Gate decks. All right, Pitch Zombies, man. This one's so much fun. Um, man, I've always been in love with Phoenix Wing Windblast for a really long time since I first started playing. Um, I just thought the idea of discarding a card and targeting any card your opponent controls is just really busted and especially putting it on top of their deck and setting them a turn behind which is like an additional bonus that's something like Raigeki Break doesn't do some situations yes you do just want to get rid of the threat but man in aggro decks like this where you're just trying to set them back a turn and man just really minimize their chances of outing your board because you just have this aggro setup and You've gotten rid of their back row already, and you have a solemn set, and you have skill drain active. It it's just becomes ridiculous. And my premise in this deck is just, what's the perfect combination with discard outlets? It's zombies, because you have so many cards that synergize with bringing them back from the graveyard, like Book of Life. So you're basically just running all of these cards that allow you to special summon from the graveyard. And then you combine it with Creature Swap because you're running six recruiters, seven with Sangin, an additional target. It, it just becomes ridiculous. This deck is a lot of fun. Um, I think it's arguably more competitive um, for a zombie deck. I really just love the beatdown aspect, setting them back a turn. All their effects you don't care about. Your effects still go off under skill drain. Obviously, your recruiters, they work under skill drain because it's going off in the graveyard and not on the field. Things like Vampire Lord can come back. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really nice, um, this deck, and combining it with triple Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and just discarding your triple Thunder Dragons, which is definitely unconventional in a zombie deck. But because you're running triple Thunder Dragon, it allows you to play the one BLS, which just combines into this super aggro zombie build aspect you're also just playing all of these discard outlets like uh tribe infecting virus graceful charity card destruction triple phoenix wing wind blast so many discard outlets that's what allows you to just play this play this kind of build it's really fun i would totally recommend it you can cut one of the phoenix wing wind blasts replace it with something else um Definitely, I leave all these open for you guys to tinker with. If you find more conventional ways to play or more optimized ways, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to see how to improve my decks. I'm always open. And you guys don't even understand how many iterations of the deck I go through before I even post it for you guys in these videos. And I still don't think these are perfect. And I've gone easily through with that last deck with 
pitch zombies i gone through maybe like five or six variations before i've settled with this one um adding the solemn judgments in there just to ensure that our you know our swings go through um that's not something i originally had so i put a lot of effort into these and this next one hat control is crazy so check it out um i hope you guys appreciate all the spice and just all these cool different cards and in different decks that you probably haven't seen before in these combinations you haven't seen this one you definitely haven't seen um man it's insane the combination is penguin soldier with magical hats and if you have desert sunlight then perfect but honestly you really just need penguin soldier and magical hats and here's what it reads magical hats is this crazy battle trap card where if your opponent um during your opponent's battle phase um, it's not even uh, when you're being attacked. It's just straight up during your opponent's battle phase. So if they enter your battle phase, you just choose two spell and traps from your deck. So you search any two spell and trap cards from your deck. This is important, and you'll see why. You special summon them as normal monsters. They have zero attack, zero defense, and face down defense position. Set the chosen monster, if it is face up, and shuffle them on the field. So check this out. You search two spell and traps from your deck. Any any spell and traps. You special summon them as normal monsters in face down defense position. And not only is this card searching two specific spell and traps from your deck, but you get to set a monster on your field if it's face up. So it also acts like as a faux book of moon, which is just ridiculous. And this card just pays off, pays off, pays off. The two cards chosen from your deck are destroyed at the end of the battle phase and they can't remain on the field except during this battle phase. It doesn't matter because you're hoping if they hit Penguin Soldier, he allows you to target up to two monsters on the field and return those targets to the hand. Guess what? Those two specific spell and trap cards you searched from your deck, they are now on your field as normal monsters, which allows them to be eligible targets for penguin soldier to bounce them back to your hand before the end of the battle phase where they would be otherwise be destroyed so that's the combo that's the spice man you get to bring a pot of greed graceful charity to your hand with this combo and if you have desert sunlight it allows you to trigger penguin soldier's effect to bounce the two cards back to your hand in case they do happen to hit one of them and you can just bounce them back to hand instead of allowing them to be destroyed it's super busted you could search any spell and traps i definitely think that this deck out of all six um is the most uh that i still need to experiment with or experiment with so if you guys have any recommendations, I definitely think the trap lineup could be tinkered with. I think the Phoenix Wind Windblast, they could probably be swapped for Double Solemns. Um, I really love Desert Sunlight because it has a lot of application. It makes all of your flip monsters in this deck, they're basically knock proof. Because you have Desert Sunlight, if they activate No Moment of Cross Out, Chain Desert Sunlight, you flip your monster, you get its effect. You get the flip effect and there no women of cross that just goes to waste guess what if you have magical hat set you can set that monster again do the whole shuffling game hopefully they don't hit it it lives another turn for you to flip it if they do hit it whatever you get to flip it it's so disgusting you don't even need penguin soldier because magician of faith if you have two spell and trap cards that you search from the deck let you know play the magical hats game it's exactly like the anime you know you have one monster card and you have three and you're shuffling the cards and when you put them in dueling book make sure bring all three of those cards the two spells and then the um monster back to hand and then set them onto field and you get to randomize it so don't just leave your monster on the field set it face down you can Bring it back to your hand, then set all three face down onto the field. The cool thing about magical hats, it'll even activate. Um, it'll even activate this special thing in dueling book where it'll give you a green button and it'll say like set this monster to the field, uh, set this spell or trap to the field uh, for those two targets that you've chosen. Monster reincarnation. I love it with Night Assailant because you guys, 
if you discard Night Assailant, guess what? You're activating Night, Night Assailant's effect. You're getting one card of choice with Monster Reincarnation, any monster card. It doesn't have to be a flip. Then, because you discarded Night Assailant, you can get any of your flip monsters in your graveyard back to your hand. I love Monster Reincarnation in this kind of deck. Super dope. Okay, the last one. You guys have been waiting for it. It is my new and improved version of Dino Gate 2.0. Man, this deck, it was one of those decks that it really just caught fire when I posted it on YouTube. You guys really loved it, responded well to it. People just love dinos, and to get a Reasoning Gate deck um, that actually can put in work, super nice. Here's my updated version. I'm not running as many copies of the dinos, but I still have all of the key players in that OG lineup. I have the Double Gillosaurus. I have Dark Triceratops and Black Tyranno. Those are the four dopest dino monsters. I looked up the lineup. There's only like one page worth on Dueling Book of dinosaur monsters anyways and these are like the four coolest so i squeeze them into a dino gate uh build and it's basically reasoning gate and you're running more things to snag your opponent's monsters their face-up monsters because you want to tribute them off for dark triceratops which does piercing and then that's really nice on a goat token or like a magician of faith by the way and then you can also tribute it off for jinzo you could also bring out Black Tyranno, tribute off one of their monsters, and then, you know, tribute off something like Gillosaurus. Gillosaurus is one of the craziest cards in GOAT format. Man, I really love this card. Um, it, has my, it has my heart because it just really won me over when I created so many decks with it. Um, the Dinosaur deck. I also had um, the Fire Spirit Turbo deck where it plays Gillosaurus and a crazy brain control package, which we kind of see in this deck. Gillosaurus, special summon it from the hand, and your opponent can also special summon any monster from the graveyard. But guess what? You combine that with a Snatch Steel, double brain control, you get to turn that negative effect into a positive one for you because they special summon any monster. They could even bring back a properly summoned BLS. They special summon it from graveyard. Guess what? You brain control it. Thank you for the monster. You have two monsters on your field. You haven't even normal summoned yet. Gillosaurus was special summoned. You have one of their monsters. You could tribute it off for Black Tyranno or Dark Magician of Chaos. So spicy. You're playing Triple Giant True Nade with Premature Burial and Swords of Revealing Light just to stall. Bouncing back Swords of Revealing Light with Giant True Nade to just stall for like six turns just feels ridiculous hand looping it um double royal decree we're playing run one call of the haunted one ring of destruction call the haunted can be super busted when you have dark magician that gets called so if they call eight you just special summon it with call of the haunted doesn't even matter also you could chain call of the haunted to royal decree so you could activate royal decree then you could chain call of the haunted to special summon one of your monsters back then Royal Decree negates all traps on the field. So even if your call to Haunted gets popped, your monster would stay on the field. So just super fun. I really love this deck. I have the Triple Gigantes just to go for extra pushes, just to give extra special summons to the deck for Monster Gate plays or for tributing for Jinzo or Triceratops, Demok. I really love this deck. This is one of the OGs. Here's my newest take on it. Um, I really like the lineup. Um, yeah, it's more refined. What I like about it is it still has like key monsters like Cyberstein. Um, I've just shortened the lineup because now I only run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven targets to hit off of Reasoning or Monster Gate. That just means the chance to hit Demok is better. The chance to hit Jinzo is better. The chance to hit, um, you know, Black Tyranno to just attack over their face down monster, it's better, right? It's just fun. I really like this deck. Try it out, you guys. Um, man, this is the first six of the profiles. I have another six coming next Monday. I hope you guys enjoy the decks. Let me know which one is your favorite. And of course, I'll have all of these deck profiles in the description down below. I hope you guys appreciate it. Thank you so much for waiting. Another six next week. All right, you guys, take care.
This is Skilled Brown Magician, and it was nice chit-chatting with y'all. See y'all soon. Peace.